every spiritual insight is a sign of malnutrition. It's simply a symptom of your deficiencies. You are lightheaded, not because you're elevated, but because you're starving. Alright guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, it has been a while since I reacted to fruitarians and raw vegans. Today we're gonna check out the channel Earthy Alston. As always, I have no idea what to expect. This is the first time that I'm actually gonna watch his videos. Let's have a look. Welcome back family. Another Hello. Day in a day video. I started my day off with some local grapes. They are in season now, they are seeded. They are very delicious and I made a juice. Are those eggs in the background? <laughs> Got <it! laughs> I don't have a juicer, so I, I hope used so. a blender and strained the juice with a Why? Bag. Nothing wrong with grapes, but why would you have only grapes for breakfast and then why would you go ahead and juice them? Obviously, this has nothing to do with a species-specific diet, let alone any type of sanity or a diet that will benefit you in any shape or form. It is yet again a beautiful display of indoctrination and brainwashing. Washing. The grape fast. This comes from the so called self proclaimed Dr. Robert Morse, aka Dr. Re Morse, because everybody that went on such a fast will end up with remorse, will end up with regret. This has nothing to do with health. You are destroying your body. And filled two glasses. They are equivalent to four cups. Then I went on a jog, always shirtless. You don't want to wear shirts when you are exposing yourself to the sun. Why do they always look the same? The sun, so you can absorb more vitamin D. Then I went home, made a little fruit snack to refuel, made a mango and some peaches. Then for lunch, I made a simple banana peach smoothie. I used seven- And if this is the first time ever that you see my channel, I was a fruitarian myself. So I'm not coming from a place of not knowing, simply looking at fruitarians and judging them. No, I know exactly what this leads to. I know exactly what kind of suffering you're inflicting on your human body. I know exactly what awaits you. I know exactly where you are headed, physically, mentally, and spiritually. It is a trap. It's a trap! I topped it with some carob powder. Carob is a great and healthier alternative to cocoa because it's not a stimulant and does not contain any caffeine in it. And fine. Cocoa doesn't contain caffeine either. In the dinner, it was really simple. I just chopped some carrots, some cucumbers, bell peppers, and tomatoes and just mashed a huge avocado and topped it with some onions and herbs. And yeah, just dip in and enjoy. That's all I ate today. I hope I inspire you with these kind of videos to eat more healthier and eat more raw. Thanks for watching and I see you on the next one. Well, but what's healthy about it? You do not know. You do not understand anything about nutrition. You heard certain things online and now you believe you're on a spirit quest. Spoiler alert. I'm God. <laughs> that is it. What is healthy about this? You just ate a bunch of sugar and a little bit of vitamin C during the day. You ate no protein. You ate no animal fats. You consumed no vitamin A, vitamin D, creatine, carnosine, cholesterol, anything on those lines. So if I judge this correctly, you're still in your 20s and this is why you can get away with it. If you continue with this, you will take some years off your life and more than that, you will diminish your life quality. Right now, you're running the sugar high. It feels good. You're energized. Yay! You're going for a run. You're drinking smoothies, juices and what not. But this is not long term sustainable. All right, that was a short video. Let's have a look at another one. It is called Food and Spirituality, the connection. Welcome back. And today I'm going to talk about the link between... Let me move my face out of your side. As you can see, he has some sort of pagan demon tattooed on his arm. It's very, very typical. Those things go hand in hand. Physical abuse through malnutrition can open yourself up to further spiritual delusion, which then can lead to idol worship, demon possession, etc. etc. Veganism or veganism in general 
and spirituality. And light us. The first link between raw or veganism to or with spirituality is that you are excluding violence. You know, um, but how? you can't really live um, on this conscious awakening path while you pay for violence. What if you don't pay for it, but you hunt your own food? What kind of violence are you getting away from? Ever heard about the violence happening in the crop production? No matter if it is vegan or raw vegan, just to plant some fruits, you will have to spray pesticides, herbicides, and you will have to kill every invader. Every food choice leads to violence. How can you uh, live in compassion and unconditional love? which are both things that you need on your spiritual pack and pay for violence. But what does unconditional love mean? How do you define it? How do you know that you're speaking about unconditional love and not emotion? The whole vegan movement is an appeal to emotion fallacy. Just because it makes you cry when Bambi's mother died doesn't mean it is right or wrong. You're basing your decision on emotion not unconditional love. A father that has unconditional love for his child will feed it meat instead of candy, even though the kid might want to have candy. If the father gives in to the emotional response of the kid and feeds it candy because, oh, I love him so much, the kid will get fat, long term will get sick. That is not true love. The correct way would be to feed the child healthy because that is the truth. That is what the kid needs. That is real love. God is love. But God is truth also. So that equates love to truth. You can only be unconditionally loving if you come from a place of truth. The truth about veganism is that it destroys the body. Destroying your own body cannot be love. You know, how can you um, practice becoming a better version of yourself with love, peace and compassion while, you know, eating a murdered being, basically? So going vegan. And again, I have to repeat this. I was a raw vegan spiritual person myself. I suffered from the same delusion. This is why I do have compassion for you, youngling. And I try to help you here. Take it or leave it. It does not mean raw necessarily for this one. But going vegan in general, you are excluding um, violence from your life. But you're not. You now conscious and aware how are you conscious and aware now that you are valuing other life other than just yours in fact so a basic bitch example here how about the native americans they didn't value the animal they weren't conscious about it they didn't give it praise of course they did and arguably those native americans had a better spiritual connection than many westerners in this day and age how do you explain that this lifestyle of um, excluding violence from your lifestyle whether it's fashion sports and thought um, what uh, food you know everything that has to do with violence um, is part of the five yamas of the yoga sutras of Patanjali which we all know what it's called ahimsa so living with this um, point of ahimsa is definitely from my perspective necessary for your spiritual path but if you appeal to hinduism why don't you talk about the war path that arjuna had to take krishna told him he has to go to war there is a place of violence if you again appeal to hinduism you will have to know about that history of why? gurus swamis teachers, saints, sages, all of these enlightened beings, they all say the same things. The Buddha um, ed educated about non-violence, about not killing or not taking uh, a life of a sentient being. And you know, many people like Mahatma Gandhi or Sri Krishna or Maharaji Nimkarwala Baba or Ramana Maharshi, 
Paramahamsa Yagananda, Ramakrishna, all of them. Why do we only talk about movements from the Far East, but we do not talk about monotheistic religions? How about those people? Are only the Asians enlightened? Jesus. He proved me wrong. Yes, Jesus, exactly. Jesus fed fish to his disciples. You know that. People, or should I say avatars, these spiritual beings, all um, talked about this universal truth of non-violence. So definitely, going vegan, not necessarily wrong. But Jesus did preach that you shouldn't kill your fellow man. You're right so far. But it didn't imply animals at all. Zero. But going vegan is definitely linked with spirituality. Because Why? Ahimsa, you know, you have to live with Ahimsa, non-violence, in order to live a spiritual life. You know, you can you have to accept Why? violence and replace it with compassion, awareness and But you do understand that there are non violent ways of killing an animal. When you go on a raw food diet, you are also eating karma less food. Obviously, um, eating meat is full of karma because you are killing So all the animals in nature have bad karma? It can be extended as well to ripping and uprooting Vegetables, for example, which I am not saying that you are harming them. Why not? They do not have a nervous system. They are not so sentient, what? although they are alive, but they are not sentient. You just proved that you are a brainwashed victim of the internet, ultimately. This is what vegans repeat over and over and over again until you all believe it. But how do you know? You're talking about spirituality. You're talking about the spiritual realm. Why don't you acknowledge then that plants have a spiritual being as well? If everything is spirit, everything is alive, what is the difference? If you're talking about the avatar, what does it matter that the avatar of the sheep has a certain brain size and the broccoli doesn't? What do you base their value on? Do they have intrinsic value or does value equal brain? With that, you enter the materialist worldview yet again and you end up in Darwinism. This is the atheist vegan philosophy. With it, you explained exactly zero. I'm not harming them, but you are still putting a kind of a karma, you know, because you are kind of destroying it. But when you eat fruit, the fruit is ripened on the tree and it's the only food that drops willingly in your hands when it's ready to be eaten. So yeah, that's what the fruitarians say. Fruit has less karma than vegetables. Because so what? Fruit comes willingly to you. So that means that monkeys are the most enlightened beings here on this planet? From one fruit you can create an abundance of fruit. From one cow you can create an abundance of food. With it you can feed a whole family for more than a year. Eating predominantly fruits will cost you less karma because fruit drops with And what then? If we take your example, people like Freely the Banana Girl, Durian Rider and all the other must be super enlightened gurus. They must be super spiritual, but they are not. They're hangry people. They hate life. They hate people. They hate everything around them. They hate themselves. If it has so little karma to eat only fruits, why don't we see more enlightened fruitarians and vegans? Those people are the worst kind of creatures. Those people are always stressed. They're always hungry. They hate everything. Um, taking veganism one step further into karmaless, which is the second point. And the next is eat nothing which is transitioning to a raw vegan diet. And the third point is as well eating a raw vegan diet because of the bio photons. The end goal is always a breatharianism, which is the manifestation of their eating disorder and their mental illness. They hate themselves. They hate humans. They hate it to be a human. This is why this whole spiritual movement is essentially transhumanism. They're trying to escape their human condition. It is escapism in a nutshell. They hate their flesh body so much that they want to torture it by eating only fruits until they ascend and become a spiritual being. It doesn't work that way. It doesn't happen. You're simply starving yourself. Every spiritual insight 
is a sign of malnutrition. It's simply a symptom of your deficiencies. You are lightheaded, not because you're elevated, but because you're starving. I know that fruit is the highest food that contains biophotons. Because they John Rose. grow high up in the trees and they get the most direct sunlight. And so biophotons are the stored sunlight energy, which when you eat them, they become a part of your DNA. And that show me the science. Biophoton will feed your sixth sense, you know, and it will make you feel the oneness with everything, with the collective with humans, with animals, with nature. But let me ask you something. Don't you think that animals feel one with everything? Wouldn't you say that they're much more intuitive and feel this oneness? But they are eating animals. Everything eats each other. If you want to escape that circle, you will suffer. And as well, it will increase your intuition and you are oh. literally eating. your intuition if you would be alone in a forest for a while your intuition would kick back in because now it's completely gone and then you would start eating animals that is your intuition crying about animals getting killed comes from a very privileged place where you can buy soy slop in the supermarket then you can listen to your emotions and go vegan but if you would return to a natural environment, your instinct, your true instinct would kick back in and you would eat meat. I think that sunlight energy, as you know, this body is made out of energy, of electric energy. It makes our body move and we need that electricity. We need that energy. We need to eat that biophotons because when you eat biophotons, you are literally eating the sun. So why can't I just go out into the sun then? When you cook the food, you are destroying all biophotons. So this is why a raw vegan diet um, is, will help you on your spiritual path or it is linked to spirituality. Because when you eat raw, you're going to eat the food. That so how come that all the spiritual masters essentially went on a fast where they didn't eat anything? No biophotons either. You're supposed to eat only that the, the, that the food that God made for us to eat. But God clearly states in his holy scriptures that he created animals for us to eat. Enzymes, the Which God do you talk about? The, the, the nutrients in it that God put there for you. To sustain this body. Yes, exactly. I rest my case. Animals have all the nutrients that we need in order to be healthy. Fruits don't. Who told Adam and Eve to eat the apple? Certainly not God. That when you eat raw, you are eating the healthiest diet on earth. And so How? you are keeping this temple that God gave you to fulfill your dharma, the world's dharma, to serve humanity. If you would truly serve humanity, you would eat a species specific diet suited for humans. And you can have this um, temple, this vessel, healthy and strong. You know, the word, the, the word food literally means um, something that nourishes the body, something you, you, you Right, absorb. that's why meat comes from me eat. And so if you're not eating- It's nourishing, it's healthy. Food that does not nourish the body, it's not food. That's right. Applause. <laughs> you just explained it, man. Fruits do not nourish your body. They have no fat soluble vitamins. Do you get this? They have no protein, literally zero protein. No matter how much fruit you eat, you will end up eating yourself because your body needs proteins and fats. Where does it get it from? There is none in your diet. Therefore, it has to cannibalize itself. This is why you still feel good, because you're getting high on your own supply. That's pretty much what you're doing. Your body goes through its own fat and muscle reserves until there is nothing left. You will get terribly skinny, deteriorate and age prematurely because fruits do not nourish you. If it does not nourish the body, it shall not yeah. be called food. And God right. intended food for life. You know, God made food so that we can sustain our existence. Yeah. And so God intended food for life. 
Yeah. And so we should eat to live and not live to eat. So okay. if you are eating animal-based products, if you are eating heavily cooked food, you are denaturing your food, you are killing those nutrients, or you are eating something with nutrients, but also skinning you on the other hand, like, for example, meat. <laughs> with uric acid, for example, and the lack of fiber in meat. <laughs> it's gonna denature your body. And so, you are not following the God's law. Uh, it's terribly twisted, man. You're saying certain things that are true, but you base them on falseness. If you eat in excess of fiber, you will get constipated or you will get diarrhea. Or worse than that, you will destroy your gut and then you're left with SIBO or Crohn's disease or whatnot. If you don't eat protein, you can observe how your body eats your own muscle. If you don't eat fat, you can observe how your body eats its own fat. So that clearly shows you what we are meant to eat, aside from our gut system. If you look at herbivorous animals, no matter if it is a monkey or if it is a cow, their gut system is completely different than that of the human. Our gut is fairly similar to a dog. Look it up. We are perfectly suited to eat meat. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. Long enough as it is, as always. I'm going to cut myself off here. Earthly Alston, if you're watching, this is not against you. This is for you. I've been a raw vegan, a fruitarian. I was on the spiritual path myself. I drank ayahuasca, mushrooms, meditation, etc., etc. You name it. In the end, ultimately, it is empty. It is an anti-human agenda that will destroy you. The compassionate, empathetic, soft male is essentially a scam. It is the modern day soy boy. No, it's not the enlightened guru. No, it's not the spiritual warrior. If you look into Jesus and his real teaching, you will see that it wasn't so compassionate after all. He will come back to divide with the sword. What does that mean? It is a division between truth and lies. So it's not about holding hands, eating vegan Buddha bowls and singing Kumbaya, my lord, around the fireplace. It is about what is right and what is wrong. It is about what is true and what is false, about real love and real hate. Because your movement poses, masquerades as love. But it's the opposite. It is absolute hate because it destroys humans' lives. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel, all the links are in the description box below. Thank you very much. As always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.